Kuzangpo and a very warm welcome to our weekly news magazine program, Bhutan This Week. I'm Tandon Finso. Our top stories this week, country's dollar reserve, enough only for next 15 months. Dog bite cases becoming rampant despite efforts to control population. And cordyceps from Lunana fetches this year's highest price, but low seller turnout disappoints buyers. Prime Minister Dr. Lotus Hirin said the country's dollar reserve would last only about 15 months from now if the economic situation doesn't improve. He said this to public servants and locals during his recent visit to Bumthang. As an import-driven economy, this means the country could end up with no dollars to import essentials, including fuel. The economy is reeling under the pressure of the COVID situation, coupled with the economic fallout from the Russia-Ukraine war. Meetings after meetings, yet the Prime Minister's message to the civil servants, local leaders and the public is the same. It is that the country's economic crisis has heightened over the last two years or so. Russia Ukraine war gi na chuka dim chi impact wainga tyonga please go into walk into any grocery store any grocery store na do if there are more commodities that are made in Bhutan yani Russia Ukraine war gi na chuka dim chi more the commodities are imported more impact will be coming on us ki na chuka dim chi maximally import dependent he also said that the government has designed three phases of interventions which will be implemented depending upon the economic situation. In the first phase, the government will stop importing non-essential commodities like snacks and biscuits. The second phase consists of goods which are important but could be disallowed from being imported. In the third phase, only the essential items will be allowed to import. <laughs> He also said that the government received proposals from a few ministries and the private sector to provide fuel subsidies. However, he said short-term measures such as providing subsidies could lead to catastrophes a few decades from now. Fuel prices in the country have hit an all-time high in recent months before falling by some margin about a week ago. The country's dollar reserve has fallen to around 850 million US dollars from around 1.3 billion US dollars about two years ago. Exports have been minimal and the government had to spend around 11 billion newton to combat the pandemic. The PHPA1 and Kolongchu hydropower projects are in a limbo while food and fuel prices are spiraling. However, the Asian Development Bank projects a 4.5% growth this year. For Keep Chun Bumthang, this is Tanen Finso for BBS News. It is only a matter of time before shopkeepers of Aotso in Lunzi have their own plots. Shopkeepers are currently operating their businesses on leased land in makeshift structures. They raised their concerns to the Prime Minister during his recent visit to Lunzi. The district administration allowed private landowners to construct buildings on their plots since 2020. This left some 30 families who do not have a plot worried. They fear they might have to evacuate the makeshift huts soon. While meeting with the Prime Minister recently, they requested to speed up the process to allot the plots. <laughs> The Zonghok has issued Lagtram and some landlords have even started constructing structures. And those people who do not own a plot and run shops are hoping to get a plot from the government. Officials visiting Aotso say they are going to issue a plot to the business entities here, but they forget the issue as soon as they leave. So, we are requesting the government to issue the plots soon. 
Prime Minister Dr. Lotus Swing said the concern raised by the residents is genuine. The Prime Minister agreed to look into it. Since there is only one secretariat who looks after land-related cases in the country, the plot allotment in Oso might have been delayed due to that. So we will do the necessary follow-up soon. It's a different story if the talk is about who will get a plot and who will not. So there won't be much problem since the land demarcation is already completed. The Prime Minister also said there won't be much issue in getting a plot if they are already entitled to one. The Secretariat will be verifying it since land-related cases are challenging. However, I don't see any issue in getting a plot. As your Member of Parliament said, it is inconvenient to do business from a makeshift structure. According to Lin Zongrap Wong Chunurbo, the town has 164 demarcated plots. Except for 40 state plots, the rest are under individual ownership. The district administration started developmental activities for the Aosou town in 2018. However, planning works got delayed by a few years as the administration had to get approvals from the Ministry of Works and Human Settlement and the National Land Commission Secretariat. The town will have different zones like an urban core precinct for commercial purposes, a residential precinct, an environmental conservation precinct, and an open space precinct. For Sonam Sering and Lindsay, Kiladim, BBS News. The increase in the sustainable development fee to 200 US dollars is the talk of the town. Some say it is an early end to the tourism industry, while others laud the decision. Amid this, some tour guides are hoping to make the best of the change as they prepare to welcome tourists. It will be a different experience for the tourist when Bhutan formally reopens its borders in September. They can take a stroll around the Timber City or the Paro Valley on their own unless they are visiting monuments and religious sites that are levied entry fees or hiking and trekking. These are some of the changes that will come along with the implementation of the new Tourism Levy Act the Parliament endorsed last month. At first, uh, to be frank, I, uh, it was a blow to all the people who, work, who are working in the tourism industry. And then later on, uh, I realized that it's a good initiative. It's not only for particular one particular person, but I think as Prime Minister have clearly mentioned that it will benefit uh, and also improve the standard of guides, hotelers, everybody who are working in the tourism industry. So I have a big hope from that one. Upscaling training, firstly, and secondly, we also want to give them refresher goals because a lot of the a lot of our members have not actually you know guided for last almost three years because of COVID. It is going to become competitive even among guides. So when I talk about competitive, it means the guides who are get, who are good, or, you know will actually get good groups and not only good groups, they also will be paid more. So in that way, what happens is that a lot of the guides who have not upskilled themselves, upskilled themselves, will have to upskill. But some guides fear losing their source of income. They say the policy will deter many tourists from visiting the country. <laughs> Personally, it has affected me a lot. Many guests were waiting for the border gates to reopen. And now with this change, everyone is shocked. Everyone is telling us that it is too expensive and that they cannot afford to come. With the hike in the STF, the number of tourists will decrease drastically. However, I personally focus on local tourism. This local tourism can also really benefit and create opportunities like international tourists, so I am planning to promote local tourism. Contradicting the statement, the Tourism Council of Bhutan says the new policy will present a host of opportunities for tour guides. 
With the country promoting high-end tourism, guides will be encouraged to get certified by the council aside from the regular tour guide license. License is a basic requirement, but certification is more on a specialization. So you'll have you'll be certified to be a, a, a snowman trek guide. You know, not everybody can be a snowman trek guide. It's, similarly, one can be certified as a as a butterfly guide, but there will be some people who actually want to specialize. Some can be a photography guide. You know, some people love taking photographs, and Bhutan is a beautiful place to take photographs. So we will have certificate, specialization certificates like that, in addition to the basic requirement of a guide license. The guides will also have to develop their portfolio online to connect themselves with tourists visiting the country. The new policy will allow tourists to choose their own guides. It can be through uh, you know the people they know in the industry, or most importantly, the guides would have to come with profiles for themselves, like specialization programs or you know, specializations. In case of some can be bird watching specialists, some can be river rafting specialists, some can be culture tourist specialists, some can be a specific destination or a community specialist. He also said the rate of the guides should be based on the standard of their services. However, the council is considering fixing a minimum rate. According to the council, guides are also required for tourists attending national events, statues and religious festivals. Kiladim for BBS News. The Desups are once again at work and this time it's in the tourism sector. To improve tourist attractions in the country, they will improve tourist facilities and sites across the country. The Tourism Council, in collaboration with the Desung office, launched the Desung Takshil program on Sunday. As the first task under the program, more than 100 Desups will be working to develop the Taksang Trail in Paro. The Desups will revamp the trail that starts from the Taksang base via Pumtra till the Sangachuko Monastery. They will also clean up the route and set up waste management facilities. All of this is expected to be completed within a month and a half. After this, the Desups will move on to another tourist site in another district, which is yet to be decided. The fare for any foreigner visiting Bhutan has been increased and our plan is to offer services that are expected of the The Desung Takshil program aims to develop and enhance tourism sector and tourist destination sites and trails. Waste management is also a key component of the program. As part of the program today, over 300 desups also collected waste from the Taksang base till the Bondi town. Currently, there are more than 30,000 desups in the country. For Namgyewanchu in Paro, Yishe Gelson, BBS News. The government says the Kholongshu joint venture project is being closed. According to the Economic Affairs Minister, this was decided after a meeting with his counterparts in New Delhi recently. He said the decision was made since the project in Tashiangsi did not progress under a joint venture. The Economic Affairs Minister Loknath Sharma said although the joint venture project is being closed, they will discuss a way to carry forward the Kholongshu project. He added the Secretary of the Indian Ministry of Power will be visiting the country soon to discuss a different way to continue the hydropower project. One of the first joint venture we had uh, uh, GOI and RGOB had initiated the Bay Bay Builder. There had, lot, there had been a lot of concessions, uh, uh, a lot of trying from each side to make this uh, joint venture feasible. But uh, uh, with each day, passing day, things were not... Uh, progressing as aspired by the uh, two countries. Uh. He said the DGPC, the Bhutanese partner company, also came forward stating that they cannot proceed any further with the project. The Kolungchu Hydropower Project is a joint venture company of SJVN of India and Druk Green Power Corporation of Bhutan. The construction of the 600-megawatt Kolungchu Hydropower Project was supposed to be completed by early this year. Which modality will be the best? The JVD Mapara Mungo, and the close by Gayasela. And then the next discussion is the the Kongi Power Secretary, the Nachigi Power Secretary, Nidom Dikibe Kalaula, and for that, their power secretary will be coming to Bhutan very soon. However, he said it will not be a joint venture and that there will not be any JV projects in the future. 
He said a joint venture model of Hydropower Corporation was first tested at the Kolongchu, and despite six years at the site, nothing much was achieved. Since the start of the construction in 2015, over 4 billion newton has been spent on the project. Sring Dandup, BBS News. Dog attacks on humans continue to remain a cause of concern. It's quite rampant in the capital. Records with the National Referral Hospital show that more than a thousand individuals were bitten by dogs in the last six months, and most of them were attacked by free roaming dogs. The residents now want the relevant agencies to address the issue at the earliest. A pack of street dogs parking and chasing strangers and cars is a common scene in some parts of Thimpo. And this happens especially during the morning and evening hours. The capital reported more than 300 cases in April, the highest in the last six months. And the city saw about 170 cases this month alone. Of it, about 130 people were bitten by stray dogs. Such cases are expected to drop once the ongoing microchipping of pet dogs and sterilization of stray dogs is complete. So far, more than 3,000 stray dogs were sterilized and over 6,700 pet dogs were microchipped in Thimpo. Uh, despite uh, our efforts uh, to control the dog population, I think you see increasing number of uh, dog bite cases. So I think uh, we have almost uh, neutered like 95% of the free roaming dog population. So maybe seven to eight years down the line. So uh, we will see that uh, Bhutan will be uh, free from a free roaming dog. According to the annual health bulletin, the country reported more than 6,000 dog bite cases each in 2020 and 2021. And the cases are not going to come down until there is an intervention. Kelsang Choden, BBS News. A kilogram of cordyceps from Lunana was sold for nearly 3 million newton in Punaka. It is the highest price so far in the country this year. However, the much hyped cordyceps auction ended on a low note after not many collectors showed up for the auction. Considered a bumper season for cordyceps in Lunana this year, hopes were high, especially among the buyers. The auction yard at the Gensharik Geok saw 22 registered bidders. However, only 24 sellers turned up for the auction with a total of about 43 kilograms of the fungi. Close to 22 kilograms were sold with the lowest price recorded at 360,000 neutron. Collectors at the auction say some people of Lunana already sold their cordyceps to local buyers in their village before the auction. Likewise, some could not come due to transportation problems. A forest official says some 270 permits to collect the fungus were issued this year. The office also issued the certificate of origin for 260.8 kilograms of cordyceps. This certificate is issued right after the collection to proceed for auction. We came hoping to see a huge quantity of cordyceps here in the auction. But it is very less. There is no room to choose. We feel that we are unable to buy the expected quality due to lack of selection opportunity. Highlanders annually collect cordyceps for a month from May. According to the guidelines for the collection of the fungi, all the permit holders should sell their cordyceps only through auction. However, with just a handful of sellers at the auction yard, most bidders left disappointed. They say it would be better if the concerned authority could monitor strictly as per the guidelines. I think sellers will not be able to sell the cordyceps from their doorsteps if the concerned authority monitors the selling and buying system strictly. It would be convenient for us if they could sell the fungi only through auction.
Yeraminula. But the collectors have a different story to tell. According to them, most collectors are discouraged to auction their harvest since they could not fetch good prices in past auctions. Moreover, they say they earn more while selling directly. Some of our people do not come for auction due to the high risk of cordyceps getting spoilt due to heat here. Another reason is that some local buyers come to our doorsteps to buy the fungi when there is a good yield. Some of them sell directly to buyers by negotiating the price over the phone. I brought about a kilo of cordyceps here, but the price at the auction is less than what we got last time back in the village. So I have decided to withdraw it from the auction after paying the royalty. I will sell it next year. The price here in the auction is good for the smaller sized ones, but the bigger ones fetch more money when we sell directly. We sold some at about 1.3 million yiltam back in Lunana, and here we are getting only about 1.1 million yiltam. Meanwhile, cordyceps collectors want the authorities to allow them to sell their harvest from their Geok center after paying the royalty. They say they face lots of challenges while coming down to Genshari for the auction. For Chiang Adoji in Punaka, Isha Gelson, BBS News. Electric vehicles first hit the Bhutanese roads in 2014. Since then, the government has been pushing the transport sector to use electric cars to save energy and curb emissions. But lack of charging stations can be a major setback. This is a problem currently faced by electric vehicle owners in Pemagasil. 33-year-old Kezang Jamso is a taxi driver based in Ganglam. He replaced his fossil fuel taxi with an electric one in May this year. He is the first taxi driver in Ganglam to operate an electric taxi. However, unavailability of charging stations for electric cars in Ganglam is what bothers him. <laughs> Like him, some other taxi drivers said lack of charging points hinder effective taxi services to their customers. According to them, at least two charging stations need to be established in Pemagasil. Currently, Kezang Jamsu uses a home charger set up outside his house to charge his electric taxi. However, the downside of this charger is it is time consuming. Nonetheless, he may not have to face such problems soon. The Road Safety and Transport Authority is planning to set up charging stations in 14 districts, including Pemagatso. As of now, only Thimpu, Paro, Chuka, Wangdipudrang, Punaka and Ha have an electric vehicle charging stations. For Chinle Doji in Pemagatsil, this is Pemal Hadden, BBS News. And Green Tara Women's FC defeated United Ladies to become the champions of Thimpu Women's Open Championship on Tuesday. The experienced former national players dominated the entire match and scored four goals. Football is much more than just a game where you score a goal or win a match. It's a relationship where only love prevails. Love for the colors you wear, for that crest you touch right above your heart when you pray, and for those boots you lace up in the hope that your legs pump harder than your heart does. No wonder it is the most popular sport in the world and likewise in Bhutan. It is an event that brings together long-lost friends, families and even rivals. 
During the match yesterday, Green Tara Women's FC scored two goals in the first half and added two more in the second half, easily sailing to victory. All my old friends are away. Some of them live in Gelufu and some in Punakha. I called them if they wanted to play in this championship and all of them told me that it was a very good idea and I formed a team. We were confident that we will win. But just in case if things did not go our way, we thought of transitioning to a defensive approach. We never thought of losing though. The team was formed some 18 years ago when a young group of girls came together to play a friendly match. Likewise, United Ladies are mostly college mates and friends from the College of Language and Culture Studies. After the volleyball championship last month, they decided to take part in the football championship as well and never hoped to reach the finals. We did not expect to reach the finals, so we are happy just getting to the finals. They have former national players and even club players and we have none. Many of us are former players from Taxi College. Since they are very good, we thought we would concede even more goals than we did. We are happy with the goal margin. With the Kelmi Women's National League right around the corner, such an open championship is expected to keep the anticipating teams ready and also draw more women into the sport. Sring Dandup, BBS News. Well, that's all we have for you this week. Join us again next time. Until then, goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.